that's enough of that. No, let me not, let me not say that. And eh, don't say any of that. Mm. Ooh. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are too. So I am super excited that I have been selected to judge the first round of the book two prize again this year. If you watched last year and I will link a bunch of videos from last year's book two prize. Last year I judged the book two prize for the first time and I want to say I judged three out of four rounds or two out of three rounds. I'm, I can't remember, but I read a lot of books for the book two prize. And while it was somewhat daunting, I ended up reading a lot of books that I was assigned to read. So my mood reading took a dip <laughs> and that could be somewhat exhausting. Sometimes I read a lot of bangers last year because of the book two prize. I read take my hand last year because of the book two prize, Memphis, Horse. Young Mungo. And even though I would have read it because of the Women's Prize, I read Demon Copperhead initially because of the Book Two Prize. So a lot of these books were stellar books for me. And after I was done with the whole Book Two Prize last year, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do it again this year. But enough time has passed. And once I saw that the books that were eligible for nomination came up, I decided, yeah, the, that, that list is just too exciting for me to pass up. So of course I threw in my hat. Now I'm not going to go too much into detail about just the inner workings of how the booktube prize works. I will link the booktube prize channel down below. So if you have any interest in knowing the details about that, you can go and check it out there but I'm just gonna kind of cover the surface basics. There are multiple rounds. The first thing that happens is, and I'm not sure how he does it, but he comes up with a list of, well, I'll just show you because I printed them all out so that I can be somewhat thoughtful about my initial nominations. So he comes out with, I wanna say, I might as well count, 345. Okay, so about 90 books that are eligible to be nominated. And he asks everybody who's interested in judging to pick up to 20 books that they would like to see in the semifinals, books that will be read by judges and ranked. And once those are all submitted, then he comes up with the list of the most nominated books and he has 48 books that are in the semifinals and they're broken down into, I believe, if my math is correct, eight groups of six. And then each of the judges are assigned a group of six books to read and rank for the first round. So initially I took these 90 books and well, I made this list and there's a lot of markings on this list. As you can see, I made certain decisions of, because there was a handful, I want to say there were five books on this list that I had already read. And out of those five, there were only two that I thought were worthy of being nominated. But even out of those two, I nominated one of them. I'm not going to go over every single book that was eligible because that would be 90 books that I'd be talking about, but I will tell you the ones that I nominated. The books that I nominated were Blue Skies by T.C. Boyle, Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya, Close to Home by Michael McGee, Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad, Goodnight Irene by Luis Alberto Urea, My Father's House by Joseph O'Connor, Old God's Time by Sebastian Barry, Prophet Song by Paul Lynch, Sing Her Down by Ivy Pochoda, Small Mercies by Dennis Lehane, The Bee Sting by Paul Murray, The Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese, The Future by Naomi Alderman, The Great Reclamation by Rachel Heng, the Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. The House of Doors by Tan Tuong Eng. The Queen of Dirt Island by Donald Ryan. The Rachel Incident by Carolyn O'Donohue. The Reformatory by Tana Nareev Du. And Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. So how did I come up with nominating those books? It was a combination of things. I read the synopsis for every single book that was eligible. I quickly crossed off any short story compilations because I just have a personal belief that short stories shouldn't be eligible for this type of contest. When you have a collection of short stories, you could have a bunch of different writing styles, a bunch of different genres. 
And you can have stories that are great in the compilation and stories that are not great. And it makes it really hard to kind of judge it as one cohesive book. So I didn't nominate any collections of short stories. And then I took books that I just was really fascinated by the synopsis. And then when I still didn't have 20, and you didn't have to nominate 20, but you couldn't nominate more than 20. But I wanted to make sure that I had 20 books to kind of throw into this pot. So when it got down to I needed to nominate five or six more, I went into Goodreads and I looked at their ratings. Not going to lie, I'm not ashamed. I want to see the books that a lot of people really loved. So the good news is that out of the 20 books that I nominated, 15 of them made it into the final. So I'm really, really happy about that. Then I looked at my email and saw the books that I was assigned. None of the books that I nominated are books on my assignment list. <laughs> so I've been assigned six books, one of which I've already read. So that makes things a little bit easier for me. And that is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. So since I've already read that, the task ahead of me is not quite as daunting. So then out of the other five books that were assigned to me, only one of which are already on my TBR, and that is Northwoods by Daniel Mason. So there's that. So let's talk about the four books that I absolutely had no interest in reading, but I will be reading anyways. <laughs> So I'm going to go over the synopsis of each of the books that I was assigned. I'll start with Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. If you've been watching me or if you've basically been watching any booktuber, you know what that one's about. That's about a woman who is an author who is not very successful, but she's friends with a, another woman who is a very successful author who ends up dying. The author who ends up dying is of Asian descent, and her friend, who is the unsuccessful author, is a white woman and when her friend dies she steals her manifest and passes it off as her own things go very very bad for her because the book is about the asian experience and people are wondering why this white woman is writing about the asian experience it talks about the cancel culture and it talks about cultural appropriation so let's talk about the five books that i have been assigned that i haven't read yet the first book is Absolution by Alice McDermott. I'm a little concerned about this one because the only other book I've attempted by Alice McDermott is Charming Billy and I DNF that. So Absolution is historical fiction, literary fiction. It's fairly highly rated uh, on Goodreads. It's got a 3.92 average rating and it's 324 pages. And this came out in the United States in October of 2023. We have a riveting account of women's lives on the margins of the Vietnam War. Okay, I'm intrigued. In Saigon in 1963, two young American wives form a wary alliance. Trisha is a starry-eyed newlywed married to a rising oil engineer on loan to U.S. Navy intelligence. Charlene is a practiced corporate spouse and mother of three, a talented hostess, and determined altruist on a mission to relieve the wretchedness she sees all around her. When Trisha miscarries, Charlene sweeps her into a cabal of well-dressed, do-gooder American wives. Armed with baskets filled with candy and toys, they descend on hospitals, orphanages, and a leper colony on the coast, determined to relieve suffering no matter the cost. Sixty years later, Charlene's daughter reaches out to Trisha, now widowed and living in Washington. As the two relive their shared experience in Saigon, they are forced to come to terms with the ways their own lives have been shaped and stunted by Charlene's pursuit of inconsequential good. Okay, somewhat intriguing. I'm just a little concerned about my previous DNF. So we'll see. It could be my next favorite. You never know. Next up is Family Meal by Brian Washington. Looks like this is contemporary fiction. It's all going to be fiction. It's got aspects of LGBTQ. It was nominated for Best Fiction in 2023 Goodreads Choice Award. Got a 3.66 average rating on Goodreads. Uh, he wrote Memorial, which got a lot of talk, but I haven't read anything by this author. So let's see. Cam is living in Los Angeles and falling apart after the love of his life has died. Kai's ghost won't leave Cam alone. His spectral visits wild, tender, and unexpected. 
When Cam returns to his hometown of Houston, he crashes back into the orbit of his former best friend, TJ, and TJ's family bakery. TJ is not sure how to navigate this changed Cam, impenetrably cool and self-destructing, or their charged estrangement. Can they find a way past all that has been said and left unsaid to save each other? Could they find a way back to being okay again, or maybe for the first time? When secrets and wounds become so insurmountable that they devour us from within, hope and sustenance and friendship can come from the most unlikely source. Spanning Los Angeles, Houston, and Osaka, Family Meal is a story about how the people who know us the longest can hurt us the most, but how they also set the standard for love. Hmm. Okay. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. And that's at 320 pages, which is kind of like the sweet spot for me for for a length of a novel. So that's promising. Next up is Orbital by Samantha Harvey. This has not been anywhere on my radar. It's got a 3.76 Goodreads average rating. It's sci-fi literary fiction. It's only 207 pages. So that's good. Got a couple of shorties on here. It's got a beautiful cover. Isn't this cover gorgeous? A slender novel of epic power, Orbital, deftly snapshots one day in the lives of six women and men hurtling through space, not towards the moon or the vast unknown, but around our planet. Selected for one of the last space station missions of its kind before the program is dismantled, these astronauts and cosmonauts from America, Russia, Italy, Britain, and Japan have left their lives behind to travel at a speed of over 17,000 miles an hour as the Earth reels below. We glimpse moments of their earthly lives through brief communications with family, their photos, and talismans. We watch them whip up dehydrated meals, float in gravity-free sleep, and exercise in regimented routines to prevent atrophying muscles. We witness them form bonds that will stand between them in utter solitude. Most of all, we are with them as they behold and record their silent blue planet. Their experiences of 16 sunrises and sunsets and the bright blinking constellations of the galaxy are at once breathtakingly awesome and surprisingly intimate. So are the marks of civilization far below encrusted on the planet on which we live. Profound, contemplative, and gorgeous, Orbital is an eloquent meditation on space and a moving elegy to our humanity, environment, and planet. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> this feels like it's going to be, what's the word? I feel like it's just going to be this long stream of consciousness, but I don't know. I'm a little hopeful because we have people from five different countries and they're in a, an isolated environment. Who knows? I mean, I'm trying to be hopeful here, but this one has me the most concerned so far. I will say the next one I'm pulling up has me very, very concerned because I know what a freaking brick it is. I have shelved this at work. I read the synopsis and it didn't seem like anything I would be interested in. I'm really, really worried about this one. However, it's very highly rated on Goodreads. The book I'm talking about is The Maniac by Benjamin Labatut. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. It's got a 4.4 average rating on Goodreads. Named a top 10 best book of 2023 by Publishers Weekly, a national bestseller, a New York Times editor's choice pick. This is marketed as historical fiction with elements of philosophy in it. It says it's only 368 pages, but I just, I remember it being a big book. Less than 400 pages is very, very doable for me. <laughs> A prodigy whose gifts terrified the people around him, John von Neumann transformed every field he touched, inventing game theory and the first programmable computer and pioneering AI, digital life, and cellular automata. Through a chorus of family members, friends, colleagues, and rivals, Labatut shows us the evolution of a mind unmatched and of a body of work that has unmoored the world in its wake. The maniac places von Neumann at the center of a literary triptych that begins with Paul. Ehrenfest, an Austrian physicist and friend of Einstein, who fell into despair when he saw science and technology become tyrannical forces. It ends a hundred years later in the showdown between the South Korea Go master Lee Sedol and the AI program AlphaGo, an encounter embodying the central question of von Neumann's most ambitious unfinished project, the creation of a self-reproducing -re machine, an intelligence able to evolve beyond human understanding or control. I have absolutely no interest in reading this book. Absolutely none at all. What am I doing here? That's going to be tough. 
I'm probably going to try to attack this one first because that's what I do. Ugh. I got to eat the Brussels sprouts, right? Before I have the cherry pie, right? Right? Oh, the only other book that I haven't talked about yet that I'm actually interested in reading is Northwoods by Daniel Mason. This one, I, I am interested in reading. This was a nominee for Best Historical Fiction for the Goodreads Choice Award. It's very highly rated. It's got a 4.23. And I think you've probably heard about this book, but I'm going to read the synopsis anyway. We have a sweeping novel about a single house in the woods of New England told through the lives of those who inhabit it across the centuries. A daring, moving tale of memory and fate. When a pair of young lovers abscond from a Puritan colony, little do they know that their humble cabin in the woods will become home to an extraordinary succession of inhabitants. An English soldier destined for glory abandons the battlefields of the New World to devote himself to apples. A pair of spinster twins survive war and famine only to succumb to envy and desire. A crime reporter unearths a mass grave but finds the ancient trees refuse to give up their secrets. A lovelorn painter, a con man, a stalking panther, a lusty beetle. As each one confronts the mysteries of the North Woods, they come to realize that the dark, raucous, beautiful past is very much alive. Traversing cycles of history, nature, and even literature, North Woods shows the myriad magical ways in which we're connected to our environment and to one another across time, language, and space. Written along with the seasons and divided into the 12 months of the year, it is an unforgettable novel about secrets and fates that ask the timeless, how do we live on even after we're gone? So uh, yeah, so those are the books that I have been assigned for the first round of the Book 2 Prize. If you don't already know, just keep in mind, while I'll be reading these books over the next two months, I have until March 30th to read these books and then rank them, but I can't talk to them on a public tr platform until after the round is over. So you won't be hearing my thoughts about these books until April. So in wrap up videos, I will be mentioning, okay, I read this, I read it for the book two prize. I can't really talk about it. So that's what's going to be happening over the next couple of months. So lots of feelings about these books. I'm a little bit concerned. I am a little bit trepidatious about it, but I'm also excited because I probably had those same feelings for some of the books that I was tasked with last year. And again, I ended up reading some really great books last year. So I think my excitement outweighs the concern. So that's good. What do you think about these books? Have you read any of these books? I'm not looking to be swayed one way or the other, but I'm always curious about what you guys think about these books and what you think about what I might think about these books. Cause I know a lot of you've been watching long enough where you guys know and have an idea of what I would like and won't like. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Or you could just say hi down in the doodly do. I always love having a conversation with you guys down there. If you're still watching at this point, please consider giving that like button a boop and a subscribe would be great. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.